I kind of had this thing going on. Uh, my friend who told me about this open mic tonight, he told me this place was called Paws, and uh, my stupid brain thought that was P-A-W-S. So I was thinking, like, are we going to be performing, like, in a pet store? Like, are there going to be animals there? So when I found out, when I came here, I was, uh, I was glad, but I was also a little disappointed, you know? Because, like, although they can't clap, like, the goldfish always smile back. And, uh... <laughs> And when I thought of that joke earlier today, it has kind of had that little jingle stuck in my head all day, right? So I've just been driving, I'm just like, this guy got smiles, man, goldfish. And that got me thinking that, like, a lot of food and snack companies don't try that hard anymore, you know? It's like you go into the store now, and it's like, top ramen. You literally can't afford anything else. You know? Like, it just doesn't, it just doesn't roll off, like, as well as the goldfish jingle. So... My name's Christian, a couple things about me. Uh, I also work at a kava bar uh, down at the hideout, which is a really fun place. The hideout, woo! The hideout, woo. woo! Woo that shit. I also host the open mic there, uh, which is really fun. I, uh, I'm quite a bit nerd. I like to play d and I like playing Magic the Gathering, I like playing video games, songs, things along those lines. And um, I feel like this is really cliche to mention, but it's also funny, that uh, I smoke big weed all the time, right? And I got that professional advice from my doctor, you know, because I went to see my doctor and he was just kind of like, hey, 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 smoke weed every day. And <laughs> the man has a degree. It's legit. Okay? It's legit. But I had an experience last night that kind of made me think that I may never want to smoke weed again, like ever. Um, so who in here smokes weed? You got any weed smokers Ow! in the house? Ow. The dude, the dude who really, like yells out, do you smoke out of a bong, sir? Uh, occasionally. Occasionally, right. That was me. The last time I smoked out of a bong, aside from last night, was about two years ago. And you may see where this is going now if you have any idea about that, right? Because we started a new D&D campaign, me and a couple of my friends last night, and I run the game. So I'm kind of the most important person, a little bit. I kind of hold the keys to everything. So I get there a little bit early, I'm chilling with my boys. My boy breaks out this nice ass piece of glass and uh, he packs it. He's like, you're here, you're doing this shit, this is for you. And I thought it was like riding a bike, you know? I was like, okay, I'm just gonna hit this, it's gonna be cool. But it's more like operating heavy machinery because I fucking rip this bad boy and I like blow it out and I like go to sit down and I can just feel myself like losing my grasp on reality. Like my players are asking me questions. They're like, oh, uh, so what happens if I pick this? What, ha what happens if I do that? I'm just like, what's your character's name? <laughs> and he's like, we're way past that point, dude. So I'm sitting there and I'm like, I'm losing it. And I just have my hand in my head and I'm like, this is terrifying, you know? And then um, <laughs> I like mumble out, I'm like, that bomb was effective. And my other friend is like, duh! You know, and I was just like, oh my god. So thankfully I was able to touch back down to reality and uh, we were able to get characters created. We had a good time. But uh, I just have to live with that now. That will always be an inside joke with them. Every time I ever go to play with them, they're going to be like, you want to hit the bomb, Christian? And I'm going to be like, uh, funny. But I wanted to say that to you guys here so you guys can laugh at me for it and I can start the recovery process because I just feel shame whenever I think about it now. And I don't think I will ever smoke out of a bong again. I think dad pens kind of give us this false sense of security. You know, because if you're walking around with a dad pen, you're like fucking hitting it at Publix and you learn to like keep it all under control and you're like, yeah, I can fucking do this. I can hit this shit. Never again. Lesson learned. So, those are some fun facts about me. Uh, I'm wearing an American Top Team shirt, and uh, I did not say that I'm a martial artist, and that's because I am not. I just own this shirt, right? And I feel like I got it, I think I got it in my last relationship, you know? I think she fucked a dude who was like way more muscular than I am, and it was like my cuxillation prize. I just got this shirt, right? And I wear it because it's like, it's funny to me, there's a joke associated with it, but I literally have so many dudes be like, hey, yo, American Top Team, right? Where do you roll? And I'm like, I don't. I don't. Please don't engage with physical activity with me, sir. Please. Do I look like somebody who's into that shit? No. So I don't know if that's like some form of stolen valor, you know? Like, I don't know if two ju jujitsu dudes are just going to fucking roll me into a pretzel one day and be like, don't wear that shirt. Because I wouldn't ever again. But for now, it's a pretty nice shirt. So... Uh, 
a couple of weeks ago, I went out to uh, to Tampa with my girlfriend. We went out to see the Salvador Dali Museum. They recently Woo! rebuilt it. It's super cool. It's a super cool. I honestly prefer the old one a little bit, but I'm glad that they're they made it much nicer uh, aesthetically. So we go out there. And, you know, we drive out in the morning. We spend our day enjoying that. We are driving back, and uh, while we're driving back, we're hitting down all these like really spooky South Florida roads that are just no lights for miles, you know, and you get, you get into this spooky mood, and my girlfriend's like, she's from New Jersey, and she's like, babe, uh, does Florida have any, like, spooky, scary stories, like, any, like, urban legends that you guys have? Because we have, like, the Jersey Devil, which I think is, like, a baby that was, like, thrown out of a window, but now it haunts the streets. I don't know the exact details on it, but she's like, what do you guys have in Florida? Like, do you guys have anything like that? And I had to think on it for a second, and, um... Ultimately, I kind of came to the point where I was just like, you know what, babe, like, we don't. We don't have haunted, spooky, scary stuff. Like, we have real terrors here in South Florida. Like, we have Casey Anthony, you know, and, like, George Zimmerman, like, actual monsters. Like, we don't need uh, the ghost monster in the woods. Like, we have actual people who will kill you and then go on to be, like, famous because of it. So, South Florida's pretty fucked. I was... <laughs> I was, uh, I was hanging out at my job the other day, the hideout, having some cabo, and I was talking to my boy, who's also going to be performing for you guys tonight, he's a super, super funny dude, and we were talking, uh, I showed up there with my girlfriend, we take our seats at the bar, he comes and joins us, and he says, hey, I'm just going to sit over here, because apparently, people just take my seat, and I said, no, 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 sir, that is a fundamental law of existence, you move your feet, you lose your seat. Like, that's, it's that simple. That's law, you know? And, like, you may not agree with it, but it's the truth. You know, I asked a couple people around me, they're like, yeah, you move your feet, you lose your fucking seat. It's simple as that. So then I got to thinking, like, what other goofy, kind of, like, rhymey, you know, bits are there like that? You know, my girlfriend being from New Jersey, she says, uh, tables are for glasses, not asses. Okay? And I was like, all right, I haven't heard that one, but it sounds legit, you know? And I, I hit her with a classic South Florida one, uh, no cuts, no butts, no coconuts, you know? Simple. And she had never heard of that, which fucking blew my mind. I was like, what do you guys do? Just allow people to cut in front of you? You don't have a funny little limerick to tell them to get the fuck back where they belong? You know? Because rhyming just makes everything nicer, you know? You can be like, hey, bitch, you need to move. Or you can be like, hey, no cuts, no butts, no coconuts. And they're like, ha, ah, you're right. I don't have any of those things, you're right. So... Then we get to the infamous, you know, one of the top, top fucking offenders. Whoever smelt it, dealt it, right? And my boy, my boy hit me with a fucking, uh, with a good one. And I also had a story that, uh, that kind of had to go along with that. I was in the third grade, right? Young, still developing, just a babe. And I was sitting in my, uh, sitting in my seat. We were taking a test. And uh, I was an awkward child, right? No one was chilling with me. So, we're sitting there, we're taking our test. I'm, uh, I'm like, shh, I gotta fart. You know, I'm uncomfortable. I got this going on. Teacher's not paying attention to me. The kids don't pay attention to me. The teacher don't pay attention to me, all right? So I'm raising my hand, I'm fucking squeaming. She ain't doing nothing. So I'm like, all right, I'm just gonna fart. And I'm gonna do this shit. Do this shit incognito. But of course, South Florida, I don't know if it's still like this nowadays, uh, the chairs are made of, like, reinforced industrial strength plastic, right? Ain't nothing fucking squeaking through that. So, I like, kind of like position myself and just like, Rah! you know, in front of the fucking entire classroom. I thought I was going smooth, Rah! and then everyone's like, yo, the motherfucker's farted, right? So I'm like, oh my God, I start tearing up. Uh, it was one of those bath, it was one of those classrooms that had the bathroom in the classroom. That's how young I was. They didn't trust us to walk down the fucking hall. They were like, well, there's the bathroom. So I'm like, ah! you know, I run to the bathroom. I'm trying to hold it together. I just sit in this bathroom with like on the floor with like my legs and my hands. And I'm just like, this is it. I have fucking ruined my life, you know? The first time I ever thought that. Not the last, but the first, right? So I'm like, this is fucking it. So I sit there for 15 minutes contemplating existence. And then finally I'm like, I gotta leave this room eventually, right? So I walk out of the room, and uh, the same kid, you know, the classic, the motherfucker who was like, yo, you know, I walk out, he's like, this man was pooping, right? And I was like, yeah, I was pooping. Because I'd rather them think I was pooping than in there fucking crying to myself, 
you know, just sad, just destroyed. And um, we were thinking to each other, because he had a similar experience, is it a traumatic fart-related incident in the third grade that leads someone down the path of comedy? And uh, any of the comics, if you have time here tonight and you're set, and you may have one of those stories deep down inside, I would ask that you share that with us so I can experience it again. So, my name's Christian. I hope you guys have a great night tonight. I had a good-ass time coming out here. It's my first time out here. I hope to see you all again in two weeks whenever we do this again. Uh, tip your wait staff. Thank your host. And have a good night, people. I'll see you around.